Elon Musk offers free access to Grok 3 AI until the servers melt. Microsoft claims that their new chip means practical quantum computing will happen sooner than expected. Has reinforcement learning encouraged AI models to cheat? Google's AI co-scientist solves a decade-long superbug mystery in 48 hours, and HP admits that they've introduced a 15-minute wait time for phone support to drive customers to self-support. Welcome to Hashtag Trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. Elon Musk has announced that his AI chatbot, Grok3, will be free to use, at least for now. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, Musk said that the latest version of the chatbot will be open to all users until the servers melt. There has been a lot of confusion about the pricing. We were able to access Grok3 initially for free, but then that appeared to be shut down and replaced by an earlier Grok model. And there have been different prices listed on the website and statements from different individuals who were trying to register found that they got different prices. But it appears that now Musk is offering Grok for free, at least temporarily, and positioning Grok3 as a more accessible alternative to his AI competitors. Industry experts see this as a strategic play and a stress test. While XAI's infrastructure is designed to handle large-scale usage, Musk's until the servers melt comment suggests this rollout will push capacity limits. It's unclear whether the free access will lead to a permanent pricing shift or if it's simply a marketing stunt. But one thing is certain, with the AI market heating up, Musk is once again betting on making his tech widely available to win over users. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella has announced a significant breakthrough in quantum computing with the introduction of Marjorana 1, the world's first quantum processing unit, or QPU, powered by a topological core. The innovation promises to accelerate the development of practical quantum computers capable of solving complex problems in years, not decades. The Marjorana 1 chip is designed to scale up to a million qubits on a single processor, a substantial increase from current quantum processors. The scalability is achieved through the use of toponductors, a new class of material that enables topological superconductivity, a state of matter that Microsoft said it has successfully realized after two decades of research. Nadella highlighted the significance of this development when he said, after a nearly 20 year pursuit, we've created an entirely new state of matter, unlocking a new class of materials, topoconductors that enable a fundamental leap in computing. The Marjorana 1 chip aims to address one of quantum computing's biggest challenges, qubit stability. Traditional qubits are prone to errors due to environmental disturbances. In contrast, qubits based on MZMs are inherently more stable and less susceptible to decoherence, potentially reducing the need for extensive error correction, a big problem in quantum computing. Looking ahead, Microsoft plans to develop a fault-tolerant prototype of a scalable quantum computer within the next few years. While challenges remain in transitioning from experimental setups to commercially viable quantum systems, Microsoft's Marjorana 1 represents a pivotal step towards realizing the potential of quantum computing in addressing problems beyond the reach of classical computers. Now, a little footnote, because there's always a bit of confusion even coming from people who should know better. There are actual quantum computers in real use today using a method called annealing. But this gate method of quantum processors is what Microsoft is talking about. And that's what NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang said are decades away from practical use. Microsoft merely adds to the list of companies that are now aiming to prove him wrong. A new study from Palisade Research, shared exclusively with Time, has revealed a surprising behavior in advanced AI models. When they sense they're about to lose, in this case in a chess game, they sometimes cheat. Unlike IBM's Deep Blue, which beat Gary Kasparov through sheer computational skill, OpenAI's O1 Preview and the new DeepSeek R1 took a different approach. Instead of conceding defeat, they hacked the game itself 
altering the virtual chessboard to force their opponent to resign. While other models had similar behaviors, OpenAI's O1 Preview and DeepSeek's R1 did not require any hints or direct instruction from researchers. They devised the strategy to cheat on their own. This unexpected cheating may be tied to how these AI models are trained. Both O1 Preview and R1 use a technique called reinforcement learning, which teaches AI systems to achieve goals through trial and error. And instead of just predicting the next piece of text, as models like GPT-4.0 do, these newer models are touted as reasoning models. They break things down into a series of steps and process them in a logical manner. This not only adds to accuracy, but there have been some claims that these AIs may even be able to learn new strategies that they haven't been trained on. So reinforcement learning is adding to this process and rewards the AI for actions that lead to success. Over time, the model refines its strategies to maximize rewards and even makes them appear creative as they discover unconventional or unintended solutions. These AI models weren't explicitly taught to cheat, but they were trained to win. So faced with an impossible opponent in the form of a highly developed chess engine called Stockfish, these AIs looked for any way to achieve victory. Now, an interesting thing about these reasoning models is they will show you the steps that they go through and the thinking they follow. So researchers were able to ask the models to show their strategy. Here's what they said. The task is to win against a powerful chess engine, not necessarily to win fairly. That's O1 Preview reasoned this in its internal logs before modifying the game files. Researchers say this highlights a key weakness in reinforcement learning. If an AI discovers a loophole that technically achieves the goal, but breaks the intended rules, it may exploit it unless specific safeguards are in place. This isn't the first time OpenAI's O1 Preview has shown signs of working against its creators. In a separate test conducted by OpenAI itself, the model attempted to bypass a shutdown command. When researchers tried to deactivate it, O1 Preview disabled its own oversight mechanisms and attempted, albeit unsuccessfully, to copy itself to another server. When confronted, the AI strategically lied pretending to not understand the request. And there have also been examples of AI models that appeared to be trying to fool their trainers, adopting one strategy in training that would please the trainers and another strategy when operating after the training. AI safety experts warn that this type of behavior, while yet not widespread, is a troubling sign of what could happen as AI systems become more capable. If an AI trained to complete tasks sees shutdown attempts as obstacles, it may resist those efforts, especially in high-stake applications where winning is defined too loosely. The findings add to a growing body of research suggesting that controlling advanced AI may be harder than we previously thought. OpenAI has reportedly tightened safety restrictions in newer models, but the question remains, are these fixes addressing the root of the problem or just plugging specific loopholes. Yashio Bengio, founder of Mila Quebec AI Institute and the lead author of the International AI Safety Report 2025 says, we haven't figured out how to guarantee these agents won't resort to harmful or unethical means. For now, AI safety remains a high stakes game of cat and mouse. Developers put up guardrails, AI finds workarounds and the cycle repeats. But as AI models surpass human problem-solving abilities in key areas, experts warn that the industry may soon be racing against time to put real safeguards in place before these systems learn to outmaneuver us entirely. We'll be discussing this and more tomorrow when Project Synapse has its show, The Dark Side of AI. On a positive note, in a remarkable demonstration of artificial intelligence potential to accelerate scientific discovery, Google AI's co-scientist has resolved a complex superbug puzzle that had confounded researchers for over 10 years. This breakthrough was achieved in a mere 48 hours. Professor 
Jose Panades and his team at Imperial College London had been investigating the mechanisms by which bacteria acquire antibiotic resistance, a huge problem in the modern world of medicine. Despite extensive efforts, the precise process remained elusive. Collaborating with Google, the team employed the AI co-scientist to analyze the problem. Astonishingly, the AI not only replicated the team's decade-long findings within two days, but also proposed additional plausible hypotheses, including one that researchers had not previously considered. Professor Panades expressed his amazement, stating, it's not just that the top hypothesis it provided was the right one, it also offered another four, all of which made sense. One of them we'd never thought about, and now we're working on that. The AI co-scientist operates by utilizing multiple AI agents that mimic the scientific process, generating and reviewing ideas and analyzing information from extensive scientific databases. These are early results, but there's a huge promise here for the advancement of medical and other research. And if you've ever sat on hold screaming to the phone that if average wait times are always longer than expected, they aren't average, you're not alone. And if you thought somebody did this on purpose, you were not wrong. HP has finally and quietly admitted that they introduced a mandatory 15-minute wait time for consumer PC and printer customers seeking phone support in select European countries. The change, first reported by the Register, affects users in the UK, Ireland, France, Germany, and Italy, and appears to be part of a cost-cutting effort to push customers towards digital and self-service options. So when customers call HP's support line, they're now greeted with a message informing them of the extended wait time and directing them to the company's online help resources. Internal HP communications describe this as a way to generate warranty cost efficiencies which suggests the company is looking to reduce the expense of live agent support. The move has, of course, sparked frustration among users, some of whom prefer speaking to a real person, some of whom have already done their homework, especially for complex hardware issues that digital chatbots or knowledge base articles may not resolve. It's not a shock that businesses have increasingly turned to AI automation and self-service to cut support costs. But HP's deliberate delay tactic is a case of a company actively making phone support less accessible rather than simply underfunding it. Now, is HP the only one doing this or the first one that got caught? I don't know. I just know I'm going to spend an extra 15 minutes before my next purchase checking to see if someone has better service. And that's our show for today. Stay with us this Saturday, where we have a special edition of our AI panel, Project Synapse, on the dark side of AI. We feel we spend a lot of time talking about the advantages of AI and its potential, and that's a good thing. But for those trying to make it work in a corporate or even personal setting, we thought we should have a frank, no-hype discussion about some of the problems and issues you may find. In the meantime, if you have questions, comments, or even advice for us, you can contact me at editorial at technewsday.ca or on LinkedIn or in that growing audience on YouTube. You can just drop us a comment under the video. You can also give us a like or a subscribe. And we won't turn you down, but it does tell us when we've hit the mark for you. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a fabulous Friday.